Hey, Raphael here today. This is part 3 in how to make a game like Pong. So, um, if you haven't already, be sure to check the first two episodes before you start this tutorial, or else it might not make sense because we are... We have done some stuff before this video started. And as you see here, these are all the programming that we had been doing. And as of right now, we have a main menu so far. And if you click play game, you'll be taken straight into the game. Let me get rid of this dock right here. And if we tap on the screen, we the ball officially spawns and we can hit the ball and try to score. But as of right now, all we have are the movements done. So what we're trying to do is add in a score and game over. That's pretty much the last thing we need to do left for this um, tutorial. So as you see, if the ball is hitting the bottom, so if it hits the bottom of the of the screen, it will spawn back at the middle. Now what we want to do is we want to make it score for the computer if it hits the bottom, and if the ball hits the top, it will score for us. So it's pretty simple to add in. Let's get right into Xcode to continue. Okay, so now we're gonna jump right into our view controller.m and make sure we have everything all typed in, which is good. So let's go to viewcontroller.h, which is our header file, and let's add in a new integer. This will be int, and this will be called computer score, and int, and then player score. So this is going to be the score for a player and the score for the computer. We're going to add in a, two labels as well. So add in two IV outlet, space UI label, asterisk, and we're going to call this, hmm, let's see, computer score label. Again, you can call it you can call it whatever you decide to. I'm just calling it um, computer score label, just so it's easier to to tell the difference between the player scores. So I'm gonna copy and paste that and do and replace computer with player. Obviously, you can call these two whatever you decide to. I'm just gonna call it um, this, so it's easy to identify which one we are referring to. But you can call it whatever you desire. And we want to add in. Actually, we don't have. We don't need to add in anything else. We just need to go to a main that storyboard and add in two new UI labels. So go over here. Go over here to this bottom right corner. Drag in a label like that. We're gonna resize it and we're gonna change the color to green just so it is easily visible like that. And we're gonna add in a few lines just so just to avoid that glitch where um if the label gets too big it will kind of go dot 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 and we don't want that we don't want that to happen. So let's make that bigger and we're going to do custom and if you have any if you have any uh, random font, let's see if I can choose a font. Actually no, we don't need to choose any font, just just um go back to system and the style is going to be heavy. And we're going to change the label to zero as we want it to start at zero. Resize that until you resize the label at the size you feel most comfortable at. So I'm going to bring that all the way up here. I'm going to copy and paste with command C and paste with command V. I'm going to drag it down and this is this time this is for the player. So we're now going to link these two labels up to the IB outlets that we declared earlier. So head over to your connection inspector and drag in computer score label to the very top label and the player score label obviously will be dragged to the very bottom. And now we're gonna um make these count up. So once the ball once the ball hits any side it will actually count up. So that's what we're actually gonna do now. So quickly head over to view controller.m and we're gonna go to view did load and make sure those two start at the zero first. So player, what was it? Player score equals zero, whatever we called our integer. So I called mine player score. So now computer score will also be set to zero. So look at the, so computer score equals zero. So we are now, we now have those two integers starting at zero. And now what we want to do is head over to um, the collision method. Well, let me see if I can find it. Order right. Here we go. So we want since we want them to update our score, let's quickly go over here and 
we're gonna we're gonna um do it so if it hits the border top we will score so that'll be player score equals player score plus one and player score label the text now we want it to output in the text so do player score the text equals bracket and a string space string with format and then do at sign to open speech marks and a bracket and a semicolon you're gonna copy and paste these two these two lines over here and paste it underneath border bottom this time we're gonna replace it with computer score label a computer score actually we because we want we don't want to we don't want the label to update we want the integer to update so computer score equals computer score plus one so that's what the plus one here means it means you'll update the integer and we want the integer to display in our text so now we can do computer score label that's right in these two speech marks we want to do a percent sign i and then do comma and that will be player score and then next we'll do the same thing for the computer score label so percent sign i for integer and then the integer right next to it so player score computer score actually so now what we've done is um let me review just in case all of these are confusing you let's review what we are what we have typed in once um once the ball hits the border top so once we score for our player it will update our integer with one every time and we are gonna output this value with our label that's what this whole player score label the text and the string is it will it will update it and output in the label same thing with the computer score we do the same thing for that so let's test and run right now just to see oops let me do let me deactivate the breakpoint all right click play and we'll see how it goes um by the way this is io this is um xcode 9 so the ios simulator is much more different um let me get rid of this dock right here so we can see how it goes so let me die. Let me um die first. Let me get the. Oops. So um we need to make. I want to demonstrate it to you as the red ball will hit the bottom. I want. I want to demonstrate how it goes now. So as you as it hits the bottom, the label is updating. Um right. So it has updated to two. So that is because the computer has scored. But let's see if I can try to get us to score. So let me make the ball. Let me make the ball hit the very top. Cause um, I want to see I want to see it update our own score this time. Well, no, that, that'll probably take that'll probably take too long. So let's click stop and let's quickly continue our programming. Um, we are gonna code. Last thing for this video, we are going to code the game over method. So that is if if the computer scores five points, it is game over for us. So let's go to the controller H and we're gonna add in a new method. We're gonna do hyphen open bracket void close bracket and this time it's gonna say game over. Let's end up with a semicolon. We're gonna copy and paste that into our implementation file underneath our at implementation and we're gonna replace that with a bracket and space that all out. So this is gonna be the game over, which will um we're just going to deactivate all timers. So that these two timers that we have um, made run in touches began are going to be deactivated in game over. So do timer invalidate. Um, whatever we called this on player timer. I'm going to deactivate both of these. So we're now going to make it. We're going to actually now add in an if statement. So if I can find. Let's find a method where we can add in game over. So we're going to add it in our ball method. And we're gonna add an if statement, so it's gonna be if um let's see computer score equals equals five. So we can um we can make it say if the computer has scored five points, it is game over for us. So we can do run self game over. This number here is you can you can choose. So you can choose whether you want your player to die at six points, whether you want your player to die at ten points. You can simply change a number if you decide to. I'm gonna say it five just to save up some time. So let's click run, click play, and we're going to see how it goes right now. 
play game and let's make the computer beat us by five points. So wait for it. So that's one scored. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make two. We're gonna make it until five. Oh dang it! Our ball. My player hit the ball. Um, just wait for it until the label scores five points. I'm sorry. This this can this can take a while, but I want to demonstrate to you how um it will look like. So three, four, five. So, as you see, when it hits five points, the ball has stopped moving because we have invalidated the timer. So in the next tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to um, make it say game over. So right now, it kind of just freezes the game, as you see over here. We want it to show game over, and then there's a retry button and all those. But we will be doing that in the next video because this uh, I don't have enough time to continue filming. Um, this is personal reasons, so I will leave this video as, as it is, so thank you all for watching. This is part 3 of Pong Clone, and I will see you guys in the next video in part 4, where we will finalize the game over, and we'll finalize our high scores. So, I'll see you guys later.